Okay, maybe it's a time to uh, get started. Uh, so welcome everybody. So uh, so uh, Phil Pincus will actually give an opening remark. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, uh, I'll, I'll say a few words on behalf of uh, Manwan Kim and myself. I'm, a, I'm at uh, UCSB and Manwan is retired and from KAIST and, uh, and various places and now in New Jersey, but for some reason he couldn't make it. The, um, so I'd like to welcome everyone uh, 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 to this. Uh, uh, I, I, I actually, I disagree with Hung Yu. I really like the, the title of this talk, of this uh, summer school. I think it's very intriguing. We all want to learn uh, uh, this stuff. Um, uh, so these, I'll say a few words about the history. These summer schools on globally on soft matter started about 10 years ago. I don't, I don't know the exact date. I think this is number eight. Is that right, MC? Yeah. I think this is number eight. Uh, 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 and mostly with uh, Man Wan and uh, the, the two of us thinking that this was a good idea. Uh, and the, what drove us in this direction was that uh, we were uh, sitting at KAIST and working on, on soft matter. And as far as we could tell, to a first approximation, no one in Korea cared anything about it. There was zero interest and zero uh, in, in the subject. So we said, you know, it, it's not that uninteresting. So let's try to get some interest in, in Korea. Uh, I think at that time, the, the number of people working on soft systems, well, there's, uh, I think Hukyu Park was already doing that then. He might have been working on it. And there was Sung at, uh, Yu Sung at Postec and uh, in uh, Pohang. But there were very, very, very few people. So, uh, so and, and I remember uh, that in, 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 the, in that period, I don't remember how many years ago now, there, uh, I, I attended a, a Korean physical society meeting, I think it was in Daejeon, and there was a session on soft matter, and there were uh, about five or six of us there talking to each other, and that's about it, <laughs> you know, and uh, so, so we felt a, a need, and, uh, and uh, so we started the, these schools, and, and, you know, and we, of course, knew from nothing how to, how to do anything like this, so uh, they were very, started out very badly, and uh, very uh, difficult for the students and difficult. Uh, well, everything was was hard at the beginning, and uh, and and every year uh, we, uh, with a bunch of you guys who are all working together on it, we we try to improve things. And so I just thought I would show you what the program looked like in, in one year, and I just took one year at random, which was two thousand and fourteen. So let me show the screen, and you'll see what what the program looked like uh, uh, at that time. It was it seven years ago now. So I'll see if I could share the screen. Uh, uh, move. Okay. So can you see that? Yeah. You can see. Okay. So this was the the uh, that year the, the the emphasis was on active systems. And this was the first week. Look at all the lectures in, in week one. And there were this was the only one week. There were two weeks. There were two Ooh. weeks like this. And you see all of the speakers. Um, it was very dense. Uh, they're all people, mostly people you guys know of or know. Uh, I don't know if any there were any repeats here. Um, oh, yeah. Well, Huck Yu was the speaker. Uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, so it was very dense. Uh, I think the excursion, and this was, a, I think it took place in Kias. Is that right, Changbong? No, no, it was in Jist, Gwangju. I see. Okay, so it was there, it was Jist. But I think the, the excursion time involved going to a baseball game. I always like to encourage people to go to a, uh, see a Korean uh, professional baseball game, which is what I like to do when I'm in Korea. The... Uh, so, uh, so by the way, the, these uh, uh, the subject of these things at that time in 2014 
these were the, uh, uh, what, what, what the, and they were all multiple talks. There were several, three or four hours each speaker spoke and it was very dense and the students uh, suffered a lot and uh, they actually worked a lot. And uh, so, so, I, and so I thought I'd give you an idea of how this, these, these things ha have evolved. The, uh, uh, let's see, I wanna stop broadcasting. Uh, the, the, uh, so now, uh, you know, Bonwan or I are getting long of the tooth as, as, uh, as uh, Chaikin would say, we're pe pe uh, and, uh And we've passed on and the reins have been taken on by, by the current organizing committee, MC and Cheng Bong and, and uh, Hokkien Park. And, uh, and, 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 you, and you, as you see, the thing is evolving dramatically. Uh, the, uh, uh, I don't know uh, uh, where is, uh, where, if this is where, where we'll be next year. Uh, Chang Bong, is it going to be in Kiosk next year again? <laughs> so, or you guys have, I'm sure you guys haven't talked about it, even if it'll exist next year. But it, it, uh, I would, if, if it does exist, I would, uh, I'll try to come, of course. The, um, uh, so uh, I, I don't want to take any more of uh, Hungu Park's time. So, uh, so uh, I, I'll just say a welcome again, and I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm not looking forward to the talks that are at midnight at Los at California time, but uh, but but uh, uh, except for those, I'll, I'll enjoy them. And uh, so uh, that's what I have to say, and uh, and I hope everyone has a great time. And then, and I think next year it'll be different again. For sure, it'll be different. <laughs> It probably will be in, will be in real in real life, not on Zoom. Okay, take it away. Okay, okay. Thank you for the nice opening remark. So I'm Chang Gong Hyun, actually chairing the uh, Hongkyo Park's talk. Uh, so it's my great, let me introduce Hongkyo Park. Uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce Hongkyo Park, Professor Hongkyo Park at Kias. So uh, he. Uh, graduate from the University of Washington Seattle in physics in 1988. And um, he, moved, uh, he did his uh, postdoctoral research in Carnegie Mellon University and Boston University. And then he came back to uh, Inha University in uh, uh, 2000, uh, 1992, right? And then he stayed there for like 10 years. Uh, after 10 years, he came to uh, Kias. So he stayed in Kiasa for 20, almost 20 years. So basically he was in Korea for 30 years and then working on many uh, uh, problem uh, uh, related to the uh, uh, statistical physics. He's, uh, he has been working on some non-equilibrium phase transition and critical phenomena, finite size scaling, conformal field theory and synchronization. And it's all from your website anyhow, but uh, I know that the, because I was uh, I joined the TS uh, like uh, ten years ago. He started working on stochastic thermodynamics as far as I remember, and then for at least for the last ten years he was uh, very much interested in this particular subject. And he today he's going to talk about the some brief sketch of the uh, stochastic thermodynamics fluctuation theorem, and and then uh, I mean. Some of the uncertainty relation, which become very popular uh, these days. Okay. Could you share the screen and then uh, start your talk? Is it okay? <laughs> yes, yes. Please. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Chang Bong. <laughs> And I found that from the field's uh, view graph, you know, the, in the first meeting in, in what, Gwangju, I was also first speaker, first lecturer of that school. <laughs> I'm very much honored to, to give a first lecture again in this school. And I also, uh, thanks to the many attendants from uh, all over the world, especially from uh, other continents, America and Europe, especially Europe. Uh, Today, in, in my lecture, I'll try to briefly sketch the two 
very interesting finding or discoveries over the uh, last two decades in the field of thermodynamics, in my point of view, which are uh, fluctuation theorems and, and recently, more recently, thermodynamic uncertain relations. Um, if you look at the history of uh, these two theorems in derivation and discovery and all that, at the early time, it was very difficult to understand these two uh, theorems. So uh, it is very difficult to derive mathematically these two theorems. So if you look at the first couple of papers and it takes about uh, 20 pages or 30 pages written by the applied mathematicians and all that. But very recently, you know, the, after the establishment of so-called stochastic thermodynamics, it is almost trivial to derive these two uh, important theorems uh, in connection to the so-called probability theory already developed in mathematics. So in this lecture, uh, I'll try to give you the a brief sketch of derivation. So it's, it's more like mathematical, but I hope all the attendants can understand more deeply about these two theorems through the mathematical derivations and hope all you guys can derive these theorems by yourself for more general uh, systems and, and maybe more extension of these theorems afterwards. Okay, uh, uh, when, I, when I heard uh, from Myung Chol, Professor Choi, for this invitation of this school, he said the theme is emotions of life. Wow, this is the, you know, the <laughs> most important uh, uh, research project probably of humankind. How our, uh, uh, how our human being can you know appear on Earth and those kind of stuff. But I know nothing about the emergence of life, so I just googled what what kind of things coming out if you type in the emergence of life. And first image is this. This is primordial soup. At least I heard about this terminology when I learned from high school. But this is a kind of battle between the creatures, small creatures. Actually, this is not really a primordial soup. This is a computer game invented by Amazon. He's still selling this. So this is not really an emergence of life. Actual, uh, you know, the primordial soup is kind of combination of recombination of molecules and by the auto catalytic, uh, auto catalysis and whatever lightning and all that. Uh, but I also found the center with the name of emergence of life in a respectful institute, NASA. They have a center for the emergence of life. So I try to read what they are doing there. They said, you can read probably uh, from the view graph is we ask fundamental questions, what processes drove the emergence and early evolution of life on earth? That's the exact question I think is the, the school is uh, uh, asking for. Of course, I'm not going to answer to that question. I have no ability to do that. And they say that they integrated multiple disciplines and cosmochemistry, system chemistry, molecular modeling, in vitro evolution, and all that is nothing to do with me. So, but anyway, because the uh, duty is given to me, I have to do something. I also found the book with, with the exact title of this emergence of life only 10 years ago. And also very recent review article, the title is Emergence of Life, is published in Space Science Reviews. Hmm. So it's 
basically talking about the life on Earth. Most interestingly, I found this paper is only last year. Emergence of life in an inflationary universe, written by String Theory at University of Tokyo. So he is a serious guy. He said, without inflation, we, we cannot have a life in the universe. So maybe these things are very, very much serious questions, which I do not know much about it. So I took out this emergence of because I, I don't know nothing about emergence. I only know a little bit about the living matter, just a little bit. So if you think about the living matter, it's all starting from the cell, I guess. So then you can ask about what, what's going on inside of a cell and outside. Basically, inside of a cell is uh, transportation of material energy, to maintain the uh, maintain the life, so transportation is very important. Also, I, I took just a few examples. Also, bio bacterial chemotaxis. So bacteria is sensing some you know the food ingredient, food gradient, and feedback motion and information. A lot uh, involved all that. There are many many biological processes in. It is happening in the cell. Uh, what are the common things in the physicist point of view is they're all small. That's the only common thing I think can think of. They are very small. So microscopic scale, sometimes microscopic scale. Only thing I know in physics is that mechanics is if you uh, dealing with a very small system, most important things are fluctuations. There are huge fluctuations for the small system compared to macroscopic system. It is the key thing is how to control in order to maintain the life or the survival. And another thing, another common thing uh, of these processes is basically non-equilibrium dynamic processes. So, you know, in order to understand approach this this kind of uh, 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 this this kind of phenomena in physics is we have to you know the uh, bring up the whatever physical principle. The only thing we know is about the non-equilibrium dynamic process for general is thermodynamic second law. But thermodynamic second law is not a quantitative, it is not used in the, in the quantitative prediction. Well, and also it doesn't tell you anything about how to control the fluctuations. But recently, there are uh, two key, I think, advancements in understanding the fluctuation and all that beyond the thermodynamic second law is one thing is fluctuation theorems. As the theorem name already indicate, this is about the fluctuation. So thermodynamic second law is, is a total entropy production is always large, non-negative, always increasing or the zero in average. But if you put this entry production into the exponent, like e to the minus something, and average over the all the possible, uh, uh, possible whatever events, this is one. That's the fluctuation theorems. It has been uh, found already almost 30 years ago, almost accidentally. Then later on, the rigorous or the analytic derivation of these theorems in some, you know, the uh, in some uh, well-defined stochastic dynamics have been uh, uh, have been done by many many people. All kinds of fluctuation theorems, but this fluctuation theorem is basically 
uh, using the so-called density inequality, which is a complex function uh, property, this guarantees the thermodynamic cycle. So in, in, in some sense, fluctuation theorem is the mother of the thermodynamic second law. And of course, because as he is a mother, she is a mother, she has more information than the thermodynamic second law. And because this average is one, this is this tell you something about the fluctuation, not only just average. But if you, for example, draw the uh, probability distribution function against uh, the uh, of this uh, entropy production. For example, you do the molecular dynamic simulation, you measure the entropy production during whatever, 10 seconds or during a finite time period. And you do the many, many times. Then every time you measure, you have a little bit different values for the entropy production. So you have uh, some kind of distribution. So modern second law means average value is always positive. That's the only thing uh, some of the second law is saying, but this thing tells you something else. If your average over this distribution of this quantity is always one. So it has a little bit more information. Because this is, people call this is integral fluctuation theorem because it's integrate over the, this distribution. But there is more informative fluctuation theorem is so-called detailed fluctuation theorem, which is about the ratio between the two probability for the positive side and negative side of this entry production. The ratio of this probability value is always given by this simple function. That's the detailed fluctuation theorem. So this means any value of the uh, entry production, this and that ratio is also given by this and all that. Also has a, this fluxion theorem has a, a very interesting implication. If you measure the so-called frequent event probability, here is many uh, event is happening with this uh, entry production value. But here is almost almost you cannot find this uh, this event. So it is really difficult to measure this rare event probability. But because you know that this relation. You measure this guy, then you can infer the, what is the probability distribution value for the uh, the rare event. Not only that, with this uh, uh, detailed fluctuation theorem, by one line you can derive this integral fluctuation theorem. That's just integrating over. So this is the actually grandfather, grandmother of the some of the second law, so this is grandmother and this is mother and this is this of the second law. Obviously this guy has uh, more information about the fluctuation, basically symmetry between the two uh, probability value for the positive and negative side. So people call this is a collaborative coin symmetry. Uh, because these two guys got a Boltzmann medal later on for this work. Now, this is the fluctuation I'm going to talk about today. Um, but a uh, more recent uh, key development in the field of thermodynamics is thermodynamic uncertainty relations. First noted, noticed by uh, Barat and Zaypur in 2015, this is only about six years ago. And a lot of papers are coming out about these things until, you know, the still is a very popular topic in, in the community. This is look like this. What is this? Eta is the so-called accumulated current. Accumulated current is nothing but like an entropy production over the some period, over the some time period, or the heat dissipation over the some time period during the some dynamic process. A work or the distance traveled by the particle, whatever, number current between the two reservoirs and all kinds all kind of this kind of current during the finite time interval. 
and delta theta is is a deviation from the mean value. So what is this? This is the variance of this accumulated current divided by the mean current value in square. This is, we know this is a relative variance. This relative variance is basically uh, tell you about the precision of the current, for example, if bio, multi, bio uh, system is uh, generating some kind of current, and current has some mean value, but there must be some kind of fluctuations. And bio system trying to reduce the fluctuations, trying to make a precise uh, process. So in order to make a precise process, you have to reduce this guy. However, because of this uncertainty relation, in order to reduce this guy, you have to increase this uh, entropy production. So people call uh, this is precision cost trade-off. Usually, you know, the entropy production is related to heat dissipation. You know, to have a big heat dissipation, you have to lose you know, a lot of energy into that. So it is a cost. So in order to make a precise operation, you have to pay. Well, that kind of trade of, trade of uh, property has been known in a long time uh, by experience. And, but this one is uh, number two in the right-hand side is, is universal. That's what, what people found. Any questions, someone? Well, because this is a lecture, anybody just stop me and ask a question if you do not understand, uh, do not have a good understanding. Uh, okay. May I have okay. a question? Yes. Who's, who's uh, uh, I, okay, moment, <laughs> huh? uh, okay. Yeah, oh. I have just a quick question, Professor. Yeah. Um, so if this current, uh, sort of a current density, or uh, so this current accumulated current is sort of a, uh, like um, uh, you can think about the flux density, right? Uh, the, the, yeah, I mean, for example, yeah. if you think about the uh, molecular motor, like kinesin walking along the microtube, this current is basically distance uh, traveled by the molecular motor mm. for the given time. So this is the then um, so this is kind of a, a parameter, but then uh, I guess it'll come out uh, also observable, right? The quantity. Uh, it is observable. Uh, it is already observable. Yeah. In that okay. So yeah. So it, it is experimentally measurable things. So uh, this that's what I must talk about a little bit. Later. Anyway. But if you rewrite this thermodynamic uncertainty relation and move this guy to the right, and of course this is positive. So this uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation means this. So this is, you know, the thermodynamic second law is total entropy button average is always larger than zero, but this guy tell you more strict about which can be measurable by the experiments. So it is a kind of enhancement of some of the second law. And this strict bound tell you about some quantitative, uh, strict quantitative bound. And moreover, this accumulated current can be anything. So in the right-hand side can be, you know, the particle current, static, uh, this value can, come from the particle current statistics or the energy current or whatever current. So this can be many, many things. So there are very, very strict bound for this guy. So if you find a very strict, more, best, whatever, most strictest bound, then maybe you can even infer the total entry production from the bound. That's I think is the hot topic these days in this community. But anyway, so I, I introduce these theorems and relations without any kind of derivation and without any kind of intuition 
so far. So from now on, I'll try to give you a very simple derivation of these theorems and relations based on the st stochastic thermodynamics. Uh, excuse me, can I ask yeah. a couple more questions? Yeah. So um, in the graph, so for the detailed fluctuation theorem, yeah. so you show this graph and when the when delta S total is greater than its average, uh, yeah. it obviously seems to fail. So what, what happens there? It's not obviously failing, it, it, it does not fail. Well, you have to compare this. Uh, you're talking about the the, the value, uh, right, entry so production to, value here. Right. This so you guy, have then you the have ratio. to compare with the minus guy uh, here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the the ratio of the this value and very very small value is still this. Well, also this is very schematic. Just drawing is not real drawing. Okay. Okay. Oh. So this is true for any value of uh, entry production. That's oh. why that's very that's why this is important and universal. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, basically, what I'm going to do is uh, use the stochastic thermodynamics which was established already over 10 years ago. And the very basic inform, uh, probability theory to derive these two. So, okay. Then, you know, the first, uh, well, this stochastic thermodynamics actually initiated by Sekimoto in, in 1998. He only talked about stochastic energetics, but E205 diaper introduced this uh, stochastic entropy, which is the key development of stochastic uh, thermodynamics. Okay, if you know to compare the uh, equilibrium and stochastic thermodynamics, non equilibrium process, I starting from the equilibrium, which we all know very well. You have a system is governed by the Hamiltonian with X is state of the system. Then you usually think about in equilibrium, we uh, consider in the state ensemble, whatever in the state space is actually represent the state. Then most important thing is find out the probability, state probability, that the probability the system is at that state or given time. That's the most important thing. Then we know already, uh, thanks to Boltzmann and uh, and Gibbs, you know the microcanonical ensemble is uniform. So this is independent of state. The one over omega, omega is the number of total accessible state. And you, if you go to the canonical ensemble surrounded by the, this reservoir with temperature t, then we all know that this Boltzmann distribution also. Then if you have some kind of observable depending on a state, then average is nothing but average over the, the state probability. When energy is given by kinetic and potential, this is well. What happened to the non-equilibrium process which are, we are interested in? So non-equilibrium process is a dynamic process. So it's not uh, described by only a state, you have to describe this thing by a trajectory. You're starting from some time t equals zero and end up at time tau. And this initial state and final state. And during, during that process, your system follows some kind of trajectory in the state space. So obvious thing, obvious generalization is the important thing in this non equilibrium process is trajectory ensemble, gamma, and trajectory probability. So, probability, I call the T gamma. And usually, trajectory probability given by the probability of the initial state 
multiply by the conditional probability. Of course, this is only true for the Markovian system, but we, we, we are all assuming the Markovian dynamics only in this, in this lecture. Okay. Then observable also can be defined on the trajectory. The average is, of course, trajectory average over the, uh, uh, the average over the trajectory probability. And if you're thinking about this kind of uh, definition of heat and work, heat is the energy flow from the reservoir to the system and work is done on the system by the external agent. You can also define the work and heat which obviously depending on the uh, trajectory. Then uh, you can also define the energy difference uh, for, uh, for the trajectory. The so energy difference is nothing but the, uh, you know, the, because energy is state function, uh, energy at the end point minus energy of the, uh, of the initial point must satisfy the energy conservation. So W plus Q is this. Now is something, you know, the uh, stochastic thermodynamics is coming in. Can we define the entropy for a trajectory? Usually entropy we learn from the equilibrium is number of observable state in equilibrium, whatever, whatever. But we have to not understand the location. You have to define entropy for each trajectory. What is a sensible way to define the entropy for each trajectory? First thing is this. Probably the reservoir entropy change can be defined by the Clausius entropy because we know that if you have if your average of the reservoir entropy change is nothing but the heat average divided by temperature, which is taught by Clausius in 200 years ago. So maybe reservoir entropy change for trajectory is just using heat, uh, the uh, heat dissipation along the this trajectory. That's a little bit easy part and that. Uh, but total entropy is not only about the reservoir entropy, system entropy should, should involve. How you define the system entropy during this trajectory? You know, the, when I learned this thermodynamics about 30 years ago, probably 40 years ago, you know, the, there is no, you know, the definite definition of entropy for non-equilibrium systems. There are many, many candidates. I don't know which one is which, but basically what Cypher did is define this system and entropy in a, in a plausible way. What is plausible way? Then you have to go back to the equilibrium. Let's go back to the equilibrium. And also they'll try to define the entropy as a state function, microscopic state from by this way, minus log of Tx. So if the system is in state X, and entropy of that system is minus log of probability of the uh, prob state probability X, this is rather very strange. It's not a real observable. This is just a probability. However, if you define this way, then taking on average of this guy, the average is just a definition of Tx multiplied with this guy. This is well-known Shannon entropy. And take the example of a micro angle and put this uh, distribution into here then obviously you are coming back to the law of omega, which is a Boltzmann entropy, which we all know. And we replace this Px with the canonical distribution part. Then we also have a well-known thermodynamic relation in the canonical ensemble. 
free energy equal t uh, energy minus t s entropy. So if you define the state dependent entropy in this way, at least this average is consistent with the thermodynamic Boltzmann entropy we, uh, we always, always using for the description of equilibrium. So only thing he did is, okay, use the same thing. So if you use the same thing, that this is a microscopic state function, system entropy change during the, this trajectory is, is just a system entropy value at the end minus initial uh, system entropy. Well, this is uh, just the, you know, the suggestion about the definition of entropy. And so after, after with this the definition, which people call the thermodynamics, and you can drive many things which can be tested against the experiment and tested against other uh, physics principles and all that. Okay, so, so stochastic thermodynamics in a nutshell is very simple. If all others are you know, the known already, but this entropy definition is Shannon entropy type of definition of system and the Clausius type of definition of a reservoir and total entropy is some of them. That's the basics of stochastic thermodynamics. Okay, any, any question before I'm going a little bit more? I think we are already a little bit more mathematical. <laughs> some people already lost some interest, but you know, the, uh, my my lecture is, is is for the school, so I try to give you the you know the very basic uh, tool to calculate you know the not something in the non equilibrium process, um, which maybe you can understand at the beginning, but you know the later on. If you if you uh, view my you know the YouTube a little bit more few, few times you can understand that much better. Okay, so if you do not have any any more question, I'll go a little go to the probability theory, more like more mathematical, but very simple. So just to remember, for the stochastic thermodynamics, this is the only thing you have to remember. Okay. Now we're going to the probability theory for stochastic process. Again, we are interested in the trajectory probability or the trajectory we often call path for a given process. Well, usually you, you're trying to calculate something observable defined by the path. So I call this is theta as a function of gamma, whatever, it doesn't have to be observable. It, does. it can be whatever quantity, it can be defined by the S information. Yes? Okay, can I go? All right. There's a one question in the chat box. Uh, okay. Let me see. Can you see or I, let me read. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the mathematics properly, but can non-equilibrium equation collapse to classically known equi uh, equilibrium equation? That's doesn't thing. have to be collapsed. Equilibrium has a specific ensemble, ensemble uh, probability, which is you know the equally likely type of things for by ensemble and all that. In the non-equilibrium, only thing we don't know is what is the probability, state probability, which it can be general anything. Okay, anyway, I'll first go, this is just a definition. So P gamma is past probability, and theta gamma is some quantity defined by the past. And of course, average of this quantity 
is obviously given by this average over this, this probability. And the variance, as I showed before, variance is just the definition of this, theta minus average and square. And this is the basically same as second cumulant of this, this, this variable. In more generally, usually people define the generating function, so-called cumulant generating function. Then you know, all cumulant in high order can be just be obtained by differentiation of uh, this generating function. Okay. Now I'm trying to define some other process. This is a very general game. Okay? We call the adjoint process. It means this process is related to this original process by a mapping. That's the only thing. So any kind of process, it can be a very arbitrary process. And also this mapping I call the adjoint map is high. Not only process is different, you can choose different paths. So as you can see here is paths can be also mapped. Okay, try to read of this thing, it's not, anyway. Okay, and also you can measure the some different for the joint process. So this is a completely new process compared to the original process. Why I'm doing this? By choosing the joint process very properly in a clever way, then compare these two process, then you can derive the you know, the fluctuation theorem and thermodynamic uncertainty relation, all that is very easy. So this is just the, you know, the, I introduce another process. You think I, I introduce another press process uh, connected by the so-called whatever arbitrary map. Okay, now fluctuation theorem can be derived in this one page. You consider the, this observable as a relative entropy. So relative entropy is passive probability of this trajectory. And this denominator is passive probability of the adjoint process with the, the adjoint uh, trajectory. Take a law. This is we uh, people call the relative entropy. But anyway, you, you think about this, this kind of thing. Then consider this kind of average, e to the minus theta average. By definition, this is e to the minus theta times passive probability and average over. And you put the p gamma, you know, the p gamma is nothing but e to, if you move these things to, to, the, to the left, e to the theta times pa. So it is nothing but pa gamma tilde. And also this, if this map e Jacobian is one, then you can freely change, uh, replace this gamma, gamma tilde. And this is, what is this? Summing up the all the probability, past probability, that should be normalization is one. So basically, if you take this clever choice, then this kind of thing is always one. So I didn't do nothing. I just take this kind of strange choice of observable, then, the, then this guy is one. Now we go into the little bit more specific. This, we choose the mapping in this way. The first thing is a joint, we are taking identical process for the joint process. So joint process and the original process is basically identical, the same equation of motion. 
Only difference is when you talking about this map to trajectory, we are using time reverse path of gap. What is time reverse path? Is if you have a path like that, time reverse path is basically you starting from here, then coming exactly follow the, this uh, original gamma and coming back to the initial state. That trajectory is time reverse path. The same probability and different trajectory. So why you're doing this? First, you can note that if this two trajectory probability is same, then this is same log one equals zero. Then what that means? This means probability to find this trajectory is same as the trajectory for probability to find time reverse probability. Time reverse passage is same means you cannot distinguish which, which one is time for which one is time reverse because probability is the same. So theta, theta can be used as a kind of measure for the time reverse asymmetry breaking. This smells like an entropy already because entropy measures a time reverse asymmetry breaking. Uh, usually people call this data irreversibility for a past scam. Well, because zero is reversible, so this is a measure for the irreversibility. Whether this is the same as entropy production for the trajectory is obviously a question, but you know, the feel like it may be related. If it is true, and you know the integral fluctuation theorem is you put these things in there, then this, then some of the second one is coming out, and all that. So only thing you have to show is this definition of uh, observable irreversibility, whether this is the same as entry production we define in the stochastic thermodynamics in this way. This is a heat divided by temperature, and this is the Shannon entropy change of the system. Whether this definition is same as that, that's the only thing left to derive the integral fluxes, which I'm going to do a little bit later. Okay. Now I'm going to the, uh, let me see. Changbong? Changbong. Yes, yes. Are you giving me a break during my lecture or not? Uh, if you are tired, then we can have a two-minute two break. Okay, 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 okay. We can go on. Two I mean, minutes. <laughs> no, okay. five, five minutes break. You, you okay. want to have? No, 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 no. No, I, I, no, I just uh, curious. About. Yeah, yeah, okay, no. so up to here. Everything is okay, it's clear. So information theory tell you, if you can identify this choice of uh, observable, I call the irreversibility, is exactly the same as this, then integral fluctuation theorem is done. That's I'm gonna show later. Now the second one, a little bit more involved. For the detailed fluctuation theorem, I told you it is it, it has more information. So it is a little bit more restricted. So it requires something, uh, something more, so-called involution property. If this adjoint mapping is involutionary, what is the definition of involution is this? This past probability of the original process. This is a past probability of the adjoint process. Has some kind of map, adjoint map. But if you do two times in a row, and if you come back to the original guy, so I mean I square is identity mapping, that's what we call the involution mapping. Simple. You 
map the adjoined ones, and one more time, and coming back to the original and the same volume. If you require this, this one, what is advantage of this requirement is very simple. Again, this observable I define in the previous page. PA gamma tilde is uh, wrote in, in, in this mapping language. This is nothing but this. Then now you are thinking about observable on the adjoint process, then observable, observable can be the passive probability of, of the adjoint process divided by adjoint mapping of that adjoint process. Yes, I can call it this way. This is the adjoint process passive probability divided by the one more adjoint mapping. But I, as I already told you, this one more mapping gonna go back to the original if it is involuntary, then coming back to the P gamma. If you comp compare these two, is basically minus. So in this case, we can also, a couple of lines of calculation, you can drive the detail flow generator. How do you do that is this. Thinking of a probability to find this observable value, take the specific value theta. That's a definition of this probability delta function, average over the old the trajectory probability. Then using this, first thing is because of Jacobian is one, this is changed to gamma tilde, and theta gamma is minus theta a gamma tilde, so minus minus, so I put the plus sign here. And what is P gamma? P gamma is P a gamma tilde times e to the, if you think about the log e to the, then e to this guy. Just the calculus is not really. Then this, that because of this alpha function, theta a gamma tilde is minus theta. So this factor is coming out e, e to the theta and others, this delta function is a definition of the probability to find the theta a gamma tilde is minus theta. So p theta divided by p or joint press minus theta is e to theta. This is again, the result, simple result from the probability theory if the mapping is involution. This is already very uh, similar to the fluctuation detail fluctuation theorem. So if you choose the same choice as before, so a joint process, you are taking this identical process to the forward and gamma tilde is time reverse pass and you know, the, even though I did not show it, it probably this observable is entropy production. The same as entropy production, then you just put it here. Why are you Hello? <laughs> so, there, there, are, there are uh, two, two questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, Why well, can I see that this? Chat well, thing? I mean, you are, you are giving a lecture, so let, let me just okay. read you for you. Could you please repeat how the state x0 and tilde x0 are related? Let me see, tilde x0, oh, uh, okay. This. In general, it, it is not related at all. However, if you require this, gamma tilde, this path is time reverse path of uh, original process. That means time reverse is basically this is original gamma, then time reverse is the other way around. So x0 tilde should be the same as x tau. Of course, there is a little bit uh, parity issue, which I'm not gonna get into uh, in, in this talk. When you have a uh, odd parity variable, then you have to take the parity uh, inversion of that that's not important at this at this moment. So you, you think x0 tilde is same as x tau. And at this x, x 
till the tau is m at x0, if you require gamma, gamma tilde in the time reverse path. Okay. So, yeah, another question is uh, the system size effect on the fluctuation theorem. No, so, it, don't, it, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't come in. You know, the basically fluctuation theorem is, well, you can think about that another fluctuation, but you know, the this derivation is nothing to do with any kind of up to here is any uh, any kind of requirement on the system. Okay. But if you go to the little Langevang system for a single particle and that in the huge reservoir, then obviously you know to have a the Langevang system, Langevang dynamic equation is exact and the reservoir should be very large and all that, but that's another issue. Is it okay? I'm going, can I go? Yes. Okay, so only thing now you have to check for the detailed fluctuation, whether the detailed fluctuation is working or not is trying to check the involution problem. That's the only thing you have to do. Oops, sorry. So for so, the fluctuation theorem. Let, let me only, ask you one yeah. question. Uh, so involution property is more general than the time reversal uh, path, right? This is more uh, general uh, requirement or- More something. general requirement. Yeah. That's true. Because involution property, you, you are, uh, if you, you, you have a process, and you you map to the some kind of other process, you map to the some or not one more mapping, and you have to go back to the original process exactly the same way with the same initial condition and same you know the uh, final uh, final probability. All that everything should come back to the exactly back to the original. But time reverse path is only talking about the path, not the probability. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's gonna be a little more clear if I take the examples a little bit later. Okay. So now things are clear. Information, a probability theory, guarantee fluctuation theorem, integral and uh, detail. Only thing you have to do is this kind of observable definition, whether this is same as entropy production or not, for the for the some specific uh, stochastic process, you have to show that this is the same as thermodynamic entropy. That's the one thing one one should do. Then the next thing is you know to uh, you know to uh, guarantee the validity of this detail flow theorem, you have to check the involution problem. Okay, so that's the thing I'm going to do. But but uh, let, let me ask another question: is, is it necessary to talk about the involution property? You can just use the this uh, PA into uh, I mean same P and then. You choose the time reversal path from the very beginning to derive this detailed fluctuation theorem. Why do you go to the involution? Why do you need to talk about the uh, adjoint, uh, I mean, process and things like that? You know, the, for the for the entropy, you need an adjoint process, which I is know, specifically. But, but you, can, I, you can from the very beginning. You can just say that this is like a time reverse path probability. Well, uh, this is because I, I, I'm going to be a little more general because mm -hmm. this fluctuation theorem is not only for the entry production. So it, generally, you can think about the joint process. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said before, you know, the for the entropy, a joint process, you take the joint process identical to the forward process. Then you, you're going to have an entropy production coming up. Maybe that's a, easier for okay. many other people. <laughs> Try it, not to confuse. But you know, the uh, kind of mathematics, you, you want to be a little bit more general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so it's done for the probability theory, for the fluctuation theory, but you have a homework to show 
this guy is really the entry code or not later. You have another uh, probability theory for the thermodynamic uncertainty relation, which I'm going to tell you right now in this page. You know that this is thermodynamic uncertainty relation. Here is the relative variance, and here is entry production. If you make a multiplication of these two quantities, it's always larger than two. It's more like, it's like a, a uncertainty relation in quantum mechanics, similar to that. Now, also again, we consider the, a joint process in a clever way in order to prove this. So how, what kind of a joint process are you going to take? You know, the, for the entry production, as Hang Bong already told you, you just think of the joint process as identical to the forward, only, you know, trajectory is mapping to the time. But here is that that is not working. You have to think about a little bit different process. For convenience, I will call this adjoint process is parameterized by some parameter y, some scalar parameter. So it's a, I'm thinking of the family of adjoint process, depending on the value y. Of course, when y equals zero, I defined that that's the definition of original process. Okay. This is a little bit abstract, but just thinking about whatever extension of original process, then I choose the very simple, the map trajectory is the same as original trajectory. This is not time reverse. And also we take the observable of a joint process same as the observable for the original process. You're basically measuring the same thing. Then thinking about the little bit strange thing, you know, that this, this one is average of this observable in the adjoint process. But the adjoint process probability must be depending on this y, y parameter y, that this guy must depending on y. So you can think of thinking about the differentiation of this quantity. Why you're doing that, it will come out later. Okay, thinking about this one. Then re, just to rewrite, this is the definition of average, definition of average is, now it's the passive probability of ozone process. Only this guy has an information of why this observable is nothing to do with the parameter of the process. So why can get into there, okay? You are doing a little, one more trick. You add a zero. So you put this thing in, average. If you put this thing in, then this is already averaged. So it, is, can, it can go out, the, go out, out of the integral. Then this is integral of this guy. But this gamma trajectory is nothing to do with y, then it should go out. Then is left over is d gamma p a gamma, which is normalization one. So this is if you take a deep, uh, derivative over y of one is zero. So by adding this term is nothing changing. This is same, exactly same as this. Okay. This is only thing why you're doing this is this because this is the distance from the mean value. The delta theta. Uh, I define. There's a one question. Uh, yes. I, I should have asked this a little bit uh, earlier. Somebody asked a question. So I have a question with the definition of a delta S system. It's the difference between minus log Px. But uh, since we are dealing with a non equilibrium process, Px should change with the time. So is it reasonable to use notation just like a P? of x0 and p of x tau. Well, good point. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the, I think what, what 
people are asking me something like, how can I, not really coming up. You know, the probability at time t and probability at time zero, of course, probability function is different. Okay? So when you're talking about the probability, there must be a fun function of state, but also a function of time. But when we have an obvious case, you know, I just drop the time. Okay, so I call this is the probability of this uh, initial point T x zero and probability of the final distribution of P x tau but actually this p and this p is different p as a function. But you know, the everywhere you put a different name and different symbol is too much complicated. So I just, you think in that way, right? For the convenience, I just, the p means probability, not really the explicit function form. I think that's the question. Someone is asking. Is it answer to you or not? If not, then we, we can discuss later on a little bit. Oh, he said it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oops. Okay. Now here, so you add this zero, then this is nothing but, oops, delta theta. So just to this identity, rewrite. Why are you doing all this? Is, is, this is a little bit clearer if you rewrite this thing again by this. This is average over this guy and times this guy, but you know, you know to average you have another P here. So you have to divide by P you know, to cancel these two things out. So one over P and differentiation is low. So this is the nothing but this times that guy, log of P differentiation and average. Okay, so this is just the, you know, the characters. Now, something information theory coming in, thinking about the square of whole thing in the left-hand side, then this is, you think of the square of the whole thing. Square of the whole thing in the average, in, inside of average, you have a two quantity. This is quite familiar. You know, the so-called cauchy schwarz inequality, something like that. The inner product of two vectors must be smaller than the, the magnitude, the magnitude of two vectors. Magnitude product of these two vectors. It is obvious. So basically the same thing. So it is always less than you you just uh, split out and square over the both one. Okay. This cosh schwarz inequality is all you know, I think all everybody know. We learn should learn from the mathematical physics in the in the undergraduate. Okay, as soon as you write this way, now it has some smell of this form. This form is a very famous inequality in the information theory. She has a name, even though the derivation is, you know, the actual right. This is known as kramer rao inequality. And also, yes. Excuse me. No. Okay. Not only that, this second term has a special. It's a name of official information. Of course, it has a very. It has been used very. Uh, it, it, it has been a very uh, useful quantity in whatever inferring the parameter values of some unknown surface process and all that in the information theory, but I don't care about here, whatever its, whatever it's name is. Anyway, this has a name. 
Now, this thermodynamic uncertainty relation is for the original process, fluctuation, average, and this average, all for the original process, not the adjoint process. But if this inequality is for the adjoint average, so in order to make a connection with this thing, you take the y goes to zero limit in this Kramer, uh, for this Kramer row inequality. First thing, if you take this guy and taking the y goes to zero limit, it's obvious because there is no differentiation and nothing here. This is same as the variance in the original system. So at least this one came out. What else? If this is people call fissure information, it looks like log T is something smells like an entropy. Can you show this thing, take a y goes zero limit is the same as average value of entropy production? Well, it's obviously it is non-trivial, we don't know. But if it is true, then, oh, this is entropy production, oh, the only thing left is this guy. So whether this guy has a connection to this guy, for example, this guy, take y goes zero limit is similar to this average, then you, you're going to come up with the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. So here's also the same thing. We have a Kramer in Kramer row inequality. Only thing you have to show is take a clever choice of a joint process because up to here is a joint process by itself is arbitrary. Take a clever choice of a joint process as before, then make whether this is really uh, given by this and whether this guy is really given by that. That's the another homework we have to derive these things in order to uh, verify the thermodynamic uncertainty rule. So we have a couple of you know the homeworks for the fluctuation theory and the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. So from now on, I'll try to do the homework for the some specific stochastic process, but that specific stochastic process is very general enough, so-called the Langevin process. So I'll try to show, or the, I'll try to do the homework for the Langevin system in contact with a single heat reservoir. Of course, it, it can be generalized in many, many different uh, ways, for this lecture, I'll try to focus on this. Well, Langevang system is is basically uh, given by this. I'm not going to talk about this. This Hamiltonian dynamics for the determining system. If you put this system into the this heat reservoir where the many many reservoir particles colliding each other, then we all know equation motion has an extra force. Is a dispersion force and noise, and noise is really crazy, crazy, crazily is changing noise. But when we know the average is zero, uh, we know the correlation is delta correlated. In, in, in we call this is white culture noise. In that case, you know the we can derive this gamma and this amplitude of noise has a relation known as einstein of chopsky relation which defines the temperature. So this is the textbook stuff. Uh, if we, uh, I just emphasize this extra term is originated by the presence of a reservoir. So one can call this term as a reservoir force or the thermal force exerted by the heat reservoir. So there is an extra force due to the reservoir. This, this force can do work on the system. Then that work is usually people call the heat. Also, there are many mechanical forces. In this system, the only thinking about the potential force. 
but you can think about the time depend on the protocol or the non-conservative force and non-conservative force with velocity dependent. Usually, this force is a good uh, uh, phenomenological uh, example for the active matter, many, many others. But I'm not going to go to this uh, uh, very general case. Okay. So now we are getting into a little bit more mathematics. Thinking about the math. Thinking about this one dimensional system for simplicity, we time depend on the protocol. Time depend on the protocol is something like that. You have a force is potential force, but potential has a time dependent potential in general. Then thinking about energetics first, which was thought by uh, Sekimoto about 20, more than 20 years ago. If you differentiate the kinetic energy over time, then obviously this is you all know. But for the stochastic thermodynamics, this is not really correct. You have to write this very precise, uh, precise definition. Instead of MVV dot, usually we call the Stratonovich product. V times Stranovich times MV dot. Stratonovich product is nothing, you know, the way, when you have some kind of uh, very small time period, when you take the product over some others, you always taking uh, the mean value, in, in medium value of the value uh, function between this, uh, between this time interval. Usually in the deterministic uh, differential equation, choice of the uh, whether you ch choose the medium or the or, or arbitrary place in between the time interval doesn't make any difference. But for the stochastic calculus, due to the this crazy noise, it makes the difference. So you have to be careful about a little bit more uh, specific definition. But anyway. This is that, and uh, MV dot is, is given by that, so, so, so let's put it here. Then first term is V times this, and second term is this. You see, this one is, I already advertised, this is thermal force. And total energy times derivative equals kinetic energy plus potential energy, and potential energy has a Two, two, two guys. Yeah. Lambda is protocol time dependence, and you have Q chamber. And put the K dot here, then this guy cancel, and only these two terms are left. It's something like that. Again, if you think about this kind of reservoir system, the energy change must be the heat, heat flow plus work flow. And this one, as uh, this is work work done by the thermal force is proper to divide this is has a heat. If it is a heat and this leftover is uh, work, must be work. These people call this is Jajinsky work and all that and all that. There is also, uh, you know, the heat rate is defined for us some time at some point. When you're talking about heat for a trajectory, then you have the integral over. So this is the basically definition of heat for the trajectory. Centric production is also we as as advertising the stochastic thermodynamics is given. Okay, so now we are trying to go, go to the more simpler system without any time dependent protocol. So if it has X dependence. Of course, this discussion can be extended, generalized to the time-dependent protocol very easily. Okay. Now you have to thinking about a little bit more. What is the trajectory probability? That's the key quantity for the stochastic thermodynamics. So you have to calculate this S probability. But actually, it is not very difficult. 
test probability is initial probability times conditional probability. And conditional probability is the probability to make this specific pass. How to make this specific pass? In order to make this specific pass, this noise must have some specific value in order to make this. Because the noise is inside of equation of motion, if noise is some different value, then you have a different, different pass. So it noise has some specific value for each segment of this trajectory. But then noise is, as I told you, this white noise Gaussian, the probability to find that specific value of noise is exponential to the Gaussian, e to the minus c square divided by four. The probability, because it is a Markovian system, is to as probability is a product of all this probability, you know, is a probability. So it's a product. The product of this exponential, if you put the, everything on, up to the exponent, is in integral. So basically, this. Then everything is easy because noise, this noise must follow the, this equation of motion. So you just put the uh, replaced noise by this state variable, m by dumb minus f plus k m by h. But because you change the integral variable, here is c, but here is v and x. So, you know, the, you, have to, you have to have a Jacobian for the, for the integration Jacobian. I'm not gonna go into the how to calculate Jacobian, it has, it is, you can find in the standard book, but I show you the, uh, how it look like. It's very simple. Jacobian is something, or oh, this simple system is given by that, gamma over M, but alpha is uh, depending on the same thing, whether you take the Stratonovich product or the Eta product and whatever. So alpha can be, anything from zero to one. But energy is defined by the Stratonovich way. We take Stratonovich value, the one hand. So this is a conditional probability. And for the entropy production, you have to calculate the passive probability for the time reverse pass with the same process. Only thing you you have to do is nothing very easy. Time reverse, uh, time is take a minus sign. So only thing changing is here is V dot has a V is changing sign, dot is time derivative changing sign. So only this guy changing sign. Then if you, uh, uh, if you calculate the ratio of this guy and take a log, the ratio and log, then basically this guy minus this guy coming out. And all guys are cancel out. Only the cross term of m v dot minus f times gamma v are the only remaining thing. So this is the result. And m v dot minus f is nothing but gamma v plus c. This is the thing we already defined as a heat. So, so ratio of conditional probability for this case, this case is a joint process is same as original and only pass is time reverse pass. It's nothing but this Q over Q over T. People call this is Schnakenbogo formula for various uh, other processes, but it's quite simple. So this is reservoir change. Okay. But now we uh, you have to go back to the our original probability theory. There the observer is defined this way. Whether this is the same as our entry production. So if you rewrite this thing with the initial probability of the of the initial and conditional and initial for the reverse pass and conditional. And we all already know the ratio in the conditional probability is 
heat, the only left is this guy's left. Initial probability ratio. This is still not the entropy production of the system. The PR can be very arbitrary. So we choose the initial probability of the reverse process is same as probability of the end point of the original process. We choose that. So it, it can be easily done. You know, you have a process, time reversal process, and at the end, with the same probability, you, you're going to back to the time reversal process. If you choose that, well, this is also because uh, the Flockton theorem is, uh, is okay for any kind of adjoint process. Whatever you choose is still okay. If you choose that, then this one becoming uh, this guy, this is, this is nothing but the Shannon entropy change of the system. So finally, you can, this, this guy is going to be the total entry product. So I did the homework for the first part. Show that this guy definition, this definition is same as that total entry of production, at least for the system described by the Langevin dynamics. Okay. A little bit heavy if you look at this kind of derivation at the for the first time, but uh, I think that this kind of you know the Sarkonovich and Ito, and also I also show the Onsaga mass of functional. That's the key thing, crucial thing, for the theorist to calculate or drive whatever whatever things for this stochastic process. Okay, so done. But one thing I want to note that this this case is mostly not involuntary. What I mean by that is, if you're starting from the whatever initial condition and do the original, do the process, then you come up with the, the distribution, which is different from the initial, uh, for the, except for the, if you're starting from the steady state, okay? Usually different, you end up with a different probability. But because you require this, the reverse pass should start from the, this probability and do the same thing, process. What you end up with is another different, another different probability. So this is reverse pass, reverse process uh, at time tau. This guy usually cannot be the same as original initial condition for the original process. So it, it cannot be involuntary in most cases. So detailed fluxation theorem doesn't work for the entropy production, except when, when this guy is, is the case is when this guy is equal. It happens usually if you're starting from the steady state and you are end up with the steady state. So initial and final is the same probability distribution, then this, this guy is working. Or that you can think about the cyclic steady state. So you're starting from some, some state and, and after one cycle, during that you, you can have a different probability evolution, but Cyclic steady state is over the some time, you go, kind of go back to the original state. Then you do the same thing, then you, so for the cyclic steady state or the steady state detail flux theorem is working and this is, except that detail flux theorem doesn't work for them. Okay. Another famous thing is, uh, you starting from the initial condition with some equilibrium initial condition. 
uh, for this case, I you I ge I generalize a little bit of the Hamiltonian with the time dependent protocol. So this time dependent protocol at at the initial point lambda zero, and free energy depending on the Hamiltonian, so depending on lambda zero. However, it's starting from the equilibrium, and also you require the initial condition, initial probability of the fine uh, of the time reverse process is also equilibrium at that point. So at time tau, then you have different uh, lambda. So you starting from here. You can think about whatever you like. Then this theta. Is this this theta is in pink, so you have this, and only thing is this initial condition uh, uh, ratio gonna be different. This ratio is this ratio and log. So nothing but this is the for the energy difference and energy difference. So th th there seems to be the question yeah. Uh, yeah. from the audience. Uh, two questions. I don't know if this is okay. Let me see. So. Dr. Kyung-ho Kang is asking, uh, maybe it's a statement. The mm -hmm. biggest assumption is then every quantity has to be infinitesimally small enough in the thermal fluctuation. Okay. Dr. Kang, could you elaborate your question? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be. Yeah. Uh, I said simply the uh, statement for a little bit clarification. So everything, it has to be a little bit like uh, the quantity, whatever we are dealing with is quite small enough to see more homogeneous uh, kind of a space, right? So it's kind of infinitesimally uh, small as compared to thermal fluctuations. Uh, no, actually, uh, we are not assuming anything. Uh, we are interested in actually the fluctuations. So we are... Okay really uh, taking into the all the fluctuation in the system not you know the not ignoring out not like in it like in the thermodynamic limit but thermal fluctuation can be measured actually nowadays with the digital correlators and things like that so uh, we are dealing with the pretty much like a 10 nanometer or something like a less than 100 nanometers they're measurable so I wonder yes. if the Langevin equations actually pretty much sorting out the thermal noise already uh, with the diffusion. Uh, that's what's in there. So, yeah. Okay. Well, the, so, so the, I think you're questioning about the validity of Langevin descriptions in a very small system where the thermal fluctuation is really relevant. However, I, I, I think there's many, many other experiments you know, the thermal, uh, still thermal fluctuation are relevant. So still mm -hmm. you can measure the fluctuation, still yeah. described by the mesoscopic description of this long equation. Of course, yeah, I know. of course, you know, the if you go into the real world, you know, the you maybe in the very small system you cannot ignore the memory and all all kinds of yeah, so the, the, deviations the are there. The thermal diffusion is the case, right? Thermal diffusion. I don't know. Okay. But anyhow, so I had okay. just a comment about, okay, it's clarified. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, An another question is uh, yeah. about the notation, I think. Yeah. Uh, how do you apply reverse for a state, not a pass? Reverse what? Uh, reverse for a state. Not uh -huh. the path. So I think uh, he's mentioning the uh, the notation of p over p over r reverse. Uh, I mean p uh, p over x zero r. Yeah. So, uh, at the top. Yeah, yeah. So what does it mean actually? It's not. No. Uh, uh, I did not draw here. P r x zero r is is because gamma tilde is time reverse trajectory. Time reverse trajectory starting from here, the initial point x zero r is same as this curve. So p r x zero r is the initial probability of the time reverse process starting from here. Is it? 
mathematically that. Yeah, how to how to implement in the experiments that measure and things like that. And I think it's, there are many, many experiments verifying the flux and theorem and all that. So I'm not a good person. Okay. I'll go a little bit more. So now you choose this way, initial condition for the forward, find an initial condition for the I'm reverse fast or author Boltzmann distribution. Well, it can be easily done, you know, they by many experiments actually. You start, you wait for a while and then the equilibrium and you do you do the process, like a DNA unzipping, you know, whatever experiment. And after that, then you wait for a while, then you're gonna go into the equilibrium, then uh, the other uh zipping uh in the other way. So this is also very much relevant experimental situation. So people did many experiments on with this condition actually. Then you know that this is not a coherent reproduction. So you, you end up with the, the ratio of this guy is nothing but this, but using the energy uh, conservation, uh, energy change minus heat is nothing but work. So this is work minus free energy change in theta is that. So, but our fluctuation theorem in the, from the probability theory is for general for this theta. So this is satisfying the fluctuation theorem. Then this delta, phi, delta F is actually here, but delta F is, is, is some kind of, con, some kind of uh, quantity is not fluctuating, so you can go out, then you move to the right, and this is coming. Uh, this is the relation, which is a kind of famous relation. It is called Kaczynski. Another thing is, um, another thing is, in this case, initial probability of the original process is arbitrary still. Only they require final uh, initial prob probability reverse pass is given by that. So initial probability is still arbitrary. So, you know, that this fluctuation theorem is working for arbitrary initial condition. However, this guy is asking for this equilibrium conditions in both way. But if you're thinking about the mapping, this is exactly involuntary method. You starting from the initial condition equilibrium and the map to the time reverse pass, you starting from the initial condition with that equilibrium. So if you do one more time, then that quantity is the initial condition for the equilibrium. So coming back to the exactly same process, so this is involuntary. This is so, this kind of, uh, Detailed fluctuation theorem, which is known as Crookes relation, is always satisfying. It, so this is another good thing for this, this relation, uh, except you have to start from the equilibrium. And also work is the easy quantity you can measure easily, rather easily in the experiment, and entry production is, is almost hopeless. So this is quite a useful equation. The only thing I'm trying to say is this kind of relations coming out of the, basically the same thing, basically same relation, only changing the initial condition. So, you know, that you can think about the many, many fluctuation theorems by changing the initial condition in a different way, by taking the adjoint process in a different way, all kinds of fluctuation coming out. Actually, people did that. So, so called housekeeping entry production and excess entry production, people show that there is another fluctuation theorem for the stochastic process, but not many of them are used. Only thing I know is uh, housekeeping and excess entry production. That's the only useful two quantities. Is this total entry production and work? Okay. Now, uh, time is almost done. It's now, so 
IP is the old home of code of blockchain server. Okay, now you go to the uh, thermal uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation. This is more tricky. So uh, I'm not going to start from the uh, underdamped over them, underdamped time, long Zeban equation. I starting from the overdamped time. Overdamped time x is very easy. You take the m equal mass equal zero, then you move this gamma over it here, and that makes x, x bar equal to x plus c. This is overdamped time x. From overdamped time x, I try to show you uh, TUR is working there. Again, you know, the Fisher information contains the past probability. You have to thinking about the, what is the past probability for the overdamped case. In a similar way, because uh, you know that we already offer under them minus this is scale is important thing. So this is scale is gamma x dot minus f is coming here. Then this is the uh, Jacobian term. For the time reverse pass, you know, the only this guy has a time derivative. So this guy has only different sign. The minus, minus, so this is positive. So if you take this log ratio, then the cross term coming now. This cross term f is nothing but gamma x dot t. So you want to go back to the, this heat very easily for the under them dynamics. So with, with this choice, the uh, initial distribution for the return reverse process is same as the final probability of the auto for the process. And this theta, they may observably is the production. So I already showed the flux and theory for the open dynamics by two lines. But this is the not the thing we are interested in. We are interested in, in, interest in the TUR. For simplicity, I will take the E to calculus R pi equal zero. This is a little bit more technical, so I'm not going to go into the detail, but just the so Jacobian term is zero in the E to calculus. In order to derive a TUR, you have to you have to uh, exhort to the little bit different uh, description rather than, but equivalent to the Langevin description, so-called the focal plant language. This is PDF. Now I use the time explicitly here. This is the probability of the system is at state X at time T. This is the focal plant equation. And this L is a, this is a time derivative. L is so-called a time focal plant operator, which is well known, is given by this. This is the so-called drift, drift force, and this is the thermal force. This equation can be written in a little bit different way using the so-called probability current, basically the same. So in order to make uh, this match, you know, the J is nothing but this guy times rho. This is convenient to use both description is identical. Another thing I want to mention is accumulated current is, as I said, the rate times, you know, integral is always written in terms of this way. You know, the we already see that for the heat current, it is Wx is minus Fx. So many, many, not only heat current, many other currents given by this way. This is kind of velocity times some kind of weight function defined on the trajectory. So for the general current, I'm trying to show the fluctuate, the, Blockchain uncertain, uh, thermodynamic uncertainty. One more thing uh, in the standard book, if you take an average of this guy over the trajectory, then you can easily written in this way. 
So Wx is here. X dot is kind of velocity is replaced by the current and integral over the all possible maps. This is also very well known things. Uh, if you are not familiar with this, and sorry about the derivation of this. Okay, so this is a setup. Now, only thing is, as I said before, you know, to derive anything, then you have to choose the adjoint press process in a clever way. Or how, what kind of way? As I said, the adjoint press parameter is by Y. This is the adjoint process for the focal plant description. This is the adjoint, pro, adjoint process PDF. So this focal plank operator is just multiplied by this parameter. That's the only thing I did for the adjoint process. Very simple. And also I rewrite I rewrite this thing in terms of probability current. Very easy. You weigh one plus y one plus y. this is original proper original operator, so you put this here and the scheme by. Just, I'm, I, I didn't do nothing. Just write. There are reasons for I'm writing these things in explicit. This one plus y is a parameter. This is kind of constant. It's not a fluctuating variable. So if you move this guy, to the left, if you and if you change the time rescaling by this factor, then this this focal plank operator is equal to one plus y is to the left is the original focal plank operator coming in, and this equation must be satisfied original PDF at time t. Blue T. So this this PDF is related to the this PDF. So joint process probability is simply equal to the PDF or original process in a different time, in a risk scale time. From here, you can also see that this current is nothing but one plus y times different. Now almost ready. Kramer row inequality is given by that. I already showed. Only thing you have to calculate first is this one. Average in the adjoint process. So only thing I change it is this is adjoint current. But adjoint current is, can be written in this way. So one plus y times is blue t, and we scale the time because this is the integration. So you are come up with say everything is blue t, but this tau is rescaled, so it's scaled by one plus y, and this is nothing but the original current at time tau. So what, what all these things saying is with this adjoint process, everything is same, time is just a rescale. So if you measure the whatever current in the adjoint process, it's same as the original process with time is adjusting, rescale. Then you can calculate this differentiate and take y goes to the zero limit as promised. And you just differentiate this guy because tau has uh, this y variable inside. Then chain will gonna tell you this. So this is the result, but which is not what we want. But if system is in the steady state, this rate must be time independent. So tau times this rate must be the total accumulated current. So this is nothing but this in the steady state. 
So there are two homeworks in the uh, uh, TUR derivation. One is this guy is same as that guy. One derivation is done, but this derivation tells you this TUR, standard TUR, doesn't work if system is not in the steady state. But in the steady state, it's working. Okay, this is homework one. Now, the final one is I, I have to do the homework uh, two, which is trying to show the Fisher information is entropy product, is identical to the entry product. This is, is not new. This is, I, I just summarized what I got in the previous page. Important thing is there is a relation like that for the adjoint process and original process. Uh, maybe this is my uh, second to final page. So it's too much mathematics and sorry for that. But uh, I hope you know some people understand. You know, to calculate the past probability, if Foucault-Planck description is not uh, good enough, do so you have to go to the Langevin equivalence? So we, I told you, a joint process is defined by this Foucault-Planck equation. Only this thing is there, but there is an equivalent Langevin description which generates this Foucault-Planck equation. If you choose additional force in the Langevin equation in this very strange way. I can prove by one line. If you use this, then focal plan equation uh, corresponding to this guy is, this is now the drift force it has additional term. Then if you look at the first and the third term, this is F minus T round X, F minus round TX. We, uh, in the above, this focal plank operator, order J, and rho AXT is same as rho XXT blue. So this and that gonna give you the original current at a different time. And second term is, gamma cancels and you have a J and row and this row is the same. So cancel, then this is one plus Y round X J, one plus Y J is this one. So this is that. So I show the, this Langevin equation satisfy this guy, which is equal to this guy. As soon as we have an additional uh, force, and past probabilities are a little bit changing, very simple way. You know, the past probabilities, as I said, showed before is, is gamma x dot minus f squared. So this is the additional term. So this is the additional term. Now only thing you have to do is taking this, uh, calculate this guy from this uh, result the derivative of law. Now do, I'm doing that. This is also takes a couple of lines. This one, you can easily show is equivalent to this guy, log of PA and second derivative instead of square. This is just integrating by parts by one line I'm not going to show. Then log PA is nothing but this guy, and basically this guy. So you differentiate a couple of times. Only Y dependence is in this uh, capital Y. So you come up with this. You have a square, and you differentiate this guy and another guy, they're going to give you a square. And the other thing is cross terms. You differentiate this guy twice and multiply by the other guy, but this guy is nothing but the noise. Single noise average is zero in the Ito variable. So this is exactly this. 
And why is this? Then put it back here and differentiate. Then you have only this guy coming out. So this is the result. Maybe this result doesn't look, doesn't uh, ring a bell to many people, but this is a very well known description of entropy production over the, over, for the over damp dynamics. It's shown in all textbook. So, except this one half factor. So, this fissure information and y equal take a, y takes zero, then this is one half of total entry. So I did a second homo. We also sh already showed in the previous bit, this is same as this, but only in the of them steady state. And, comp and these, uh, combining these two and put it back here, then this is the finally thermodynamic uncertainty relation. Is dry. So uh, uh, before I'm going to the summarize in the final page, you know that this kind of derivation uh, is quite quite tedious and is somehow you know the, a lot of things are involved. But but in the early stage of derivation of all these things is really complex. People going into the large deviation theory and all kinds of you know the theoretical calculation, but their calculation is only restricted to the, for example, uh, measuring time is very, very large, or many, many restrictions, and huge calculation uh, load was there. But this type of derivation is, is kind of very simple, starting coming from the only the probability theory, and in, in this way of derivation, also you can uh, easily generalize to other situation, not long Jevon system or Markovian dump system, many other system. And what happens if you go to the non Markovian case, why this is not working? All kinds of questions can be rather easily answered means you know the, a little better understanding through the simple derivation. So this is the final uh, transparency I got. So I said in the before, it's some like second law and beyond, but now because you have all the derivations, so now you have something beyond the sum of the second law in this one is fluctuation theorem given by this integral fluctuation theorem. I only show it for the Langevin dynamics, but of course it works for the Markovian jump dynamics. And it's very easy to implement the information because this entry production is by self information. So it's very simple to already done by Takawa and others. And there are also other type of entry uh, fluctuation theorem is a very similar way they can derive. And detailed fluctuation theorem is, you all know now, is involution property. That's the only thing you have to look at whether your system, your measure, you, uh, you, uh, your probable can be measured in the, in the proper way, satisfying involution property. And some of the uncertainty relation I showed only in the steady state. And over them to long given dynamics. Actually, people also show the continuous time Markovian dump system, but this some of the uncertain relations is a little bit more fragile compared to the blockchain theorems. So if you're starting from transient state, actually I tried for the uh, what happened in the transient state in my derivation. This form had gonna be changed a little bit. Also discrete time Markov jump system has a different form. And if you put the time dependent the protocol, like in the Jajinsky work, fluctuation theorem doesn't change really, but here is also changing 
the form of this uh, TUR, even the naive looking on the temple on the dynamics, even in the steady state, it cannot be written in this way. We have some kind of extra form. It is all uh, uh, very, you know, the lot of activities in this in this field. You know, the, for example, do PRLs every year over the last last uh, seven or six or seven years. Thanks for the audience, uh, for the attention, and I hope now you can uh, derive all the theories by yourself and maybe have uh, some opportunity to generalize these things and uh, explore the un undiscovered world. Thanks for your attention. Okay, uh, so you have actually spent uh, like a uh, t whole time schedule, like a two hour. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let, let, uh, let's thank uh, Hyun Kyo Park again for his uh, excellent lectures. And there's a one actually, maybe it's a final, uh, maybe it's a, some quick uh, question about the number two in the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. Is there any special meaning like, uh, you know, uh, Frank constant in the quantum mechanics? That's uh, as a question from the Habib. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nothing. <laughs> well, the things, uh, 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 I already told you that some of the uncertainty relations uh, has a, some kind of complicated form, even in the underdamped Langevin dynamics in the steady state. That means, you know, the quantum system is always a velocity variables are uh, involved. So it must be that some kind of underdamped dynamics with other parity variables are uh, important. But, you know, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation for the that type of underdamped Langevin dynamics with other parity variables uh, is useful TUR uh, has been uh, derived only very recently by our group, it, it is under review still. If it is, so it is done for the classical system with the momentum and position variables are there, then I think uh, that that result can be, uh, can be a starting point to derive the quantum TUR. Uh, that's the only thing. Uh, I can say about the quantum TUR. In, uh, some some papers are already about the quantum TUR, but I, I don't think it is really relevant. I don't think it is really quantum. And uh, each bar, I don't know. Well, this you know the thermal fluctuation is similar to the quantum fluctuation in some way as a probabilistic point of view. So of course. You know, the, this kind of thing is happening in the classical system, but real correspondence and, and never been asked. Okay, so uh, we, is there any comment or question? Last uh, comment or question? Uh, if not, then okay, uh, let's thank uh, Professor uh, Hyunkyo Park again. Uh, so it's, it was a very uh, pedagogical talk. I can actually look, look at again from in video. It, the, the, all the lecture will be like recorded, so you can anytime. Uh, I mean, revisit the website and then see the lecture if you if you like. Okay, thank you very much for your right. attention. And then we have a so next talk will be scheduled on Thursday at 10 a.m. in Korean time. So it will be given by uh, uh, Paul Chaikin. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>